it goes without saying that stories matter. Think of all the important, the most moving, the most pivotal stories you've experienced, whether through a play, a book, a magazine, a film, or a poem. Great stories help us understand the world better, and they also help us understand ourselves better. But I believe that the most important stories are never read in a book. They're not read in magazines. They're not seen in a film. They're not delivered from a TED stage. They may never even be spoken out loud. The most important stories, the stories that change, that change everything, unfold inside you and me. There are personal narratives. They're intensely private, very personal, and they shape every moment of every day. They influence our behavior and our decisions. But when it comes to these important internal narratives, most people are unsure how to engage with them. This is me at age three when I first discovered the power of story. And from this time to my career today as a professional storyteller, I have found that the most engaging, the most inspiring, and the most moving stories don't end in happily ever after. They're the stories that are a little rough around the edges, the ones that show us what it means to be human. These stories are stories that show how people have overcome pain and difficulty, and they captivate and connect us. So why is it when we look at our personal stories that we often whitewash or cover up or overlook the flaws and the difficulties that create this beauty in our story? Perhaps we have an idea of what life should look like and our stories don't match that. Perhaps we're ashamed or embarrassed or even overwhelmed by the events that life has handed us. Or perhaps we find it easier to whitewash our stories than to accept and embrace them. I believe we can interact with and form our personal narratives and use them to drive us forward. I believe we can learn to live life in chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is such a funny word. What does it mean? It comes from two Italian words, chiaro and scuro, light and dark, coming together in one completely different word. It's an artistic term that artists, painters use to describe how they intentionally contrast light and dark to create depth and dimension in their artistic work. But it's also a term for what happens to us as human beings when two very different things coexist inside of us, like love and pain, or suffering and growth. When it comes to chiaroscuro, we can apply this to our lives. Now, a story I want to share with you is a story of a, a writer, as many writers have done, who have applied the philosophy of chiaroscuro to his work. And this is Hans Christian Andersen, the Danish storyteller. He wrote the original Little Mermaid in 1734. Many of you have seen this, the Disney version. His story is very different. So in Andersen's story, a mermaid gives up her life in the sea to win the, young of a love the, win, win the love of a young prince. Sound familiar? However, what happens is that she fails. She fails in this endeavor. He mistakenly marries another woman who he thinks rescued him. And the little mermaid is given a choice. I can slay him and return to the sea, or I can accept that he's happy. And her love allows her to do selfless things, and she let him be. And what's so beautiful about this story is it doesn't shy away from pain and suffering. And that's what makes the story so dimensional. So this philosophy, this chiaroscuro concept, has been used through time by artists, painters, authors, and it also has an application to our personal lives. Our shadows can create dimension in our lives. So because this talk is about personal narratives, I'm going to share my personal story and the light and shadows that it contains and how it created meaning in my life. This is my mother. She immigrated from the Philippines in 1970. She moved to Chicago. She met and married my father. She had kids. And we lived a pretty traditional life until I turned eight. Shortly after this photo was taken, my father unexpectedly decided to move to a wellness facility located in the Alabama countryside. This facility was run by very kind people who used exercise, diet, and faith to heal people suffering from serious illnesses. So this event 
precipitated a number of mag changes of huge magnitude. So we went from the city to the country. Shortly after we arrived, we were pulled out of school and we, were began, we began to homeschool. We also were not allowed to play with the neighbor children. We were not allowed to wear pants and shorts and we were not allowed to go to the public library. Now this may sound really rough for a, a, a family and children to be going through, but here's the deal. We didn't know any better. And because we were children, we created our own excitement. No books, no problem. Our crazy neighbors, who were pack rats, had built a huge shed across the field. So my siblings and I would take a flash nut, flashlight and under cover of night, we'd sneak across the field and climb up the boxes, riffle through dolls and coats, and we found books. And we took them back to our house and we read them and we hid them under our mattresses at night. It was fun. So the point of this part of my story is, Children have an easier time living life in Cherescuro because they don't have labels of what's good and what's bad. They can just experience life as is. Now, children get older and they, create, they, they gain a greater understanding. Um, when I turned 14, I was sent away from home to a private boarding academy that was very similar to the wellness facility. And this is me in the cafeteria. Now this cafeteria was very special. It had a boy's door and a girl's door and that's where you came in. You were seated at the tables and had conversation. Our social life consisted of a weekly walk. Every Saturday, we would line up, we'd get asked to walk by a boy, we'd walk two miles, and at the end point, we'd turn around and we'd walk back with a different partner. So, at 14, I knew that in other parts of the country, there were kids that were listening to Paula Abdul and playing Game Boys, getting hickeys, and taking walks. But what I realized was that there were other things out there that could have been worse for me. Although there was shadows, perhaps, there was also a deeper darkness, and I was old enough to understand that. So I chose to see light through a filter of shadows. Now, as you can imagine, growing up in a somewhat restricted and innocent and naive environment, I wasn't very prepared for college. I could write a mean poem, but I had no idea how to balance a checkbook. Also, my parents hadn't saved any money. So when school, college started, I didn't know how I was going to afford it. But I got a loan, I got need-based um, aid, a, I worked three jobs, and I had a great time. I, this is me my sophomore year with my girlfriends in college. So because I had nothing, I trusted others to help me, and they did. However, as most college students do, you run into a time in your life when you're experiencing some kind of personal difficulty. That happened to me. So I was in a time when I was very upset about something. So I went to talk about it to someone. This person was much older. He'd helped me through problems before, and it was someone that I trusted. So I told this sto the, my story to this person. He let me cry. He told me about times when he was younger and he had experienced great difficulty. We shared a couple of glasses of wine. And then he raped me. What I learned at that point in time is that sometimes people hand you your shadows. Sometimes things happen to us that are not beautiful. Losing a child is not beautiful. Having a marriage end is not beautiful. Being abandoned by your family is not beautiful. But what is beautiful is what you do with those ugly things. And so I realized I was going to have to craft my own way forward. And I chose to trust again because trust was more important than the alternative. And when I did that, when at a moment in life that threatened to suffocate me, I rose, I experienced chiaroscuro. My friend Kylie showed me that not only can people bring you your darkness, they can also bring you your light. Kylie was my college roommate. And as I mentioned earlier, I had no money in college. One semester, School started, I needed to buy books. I had $10 in my checking account. So I called my parents and they said, I'm sorry, we can't help you right now. So I was, as I was crying about this, Kylie walked in. The next day, on my backpack, I found a check from Kylie's bank account for $250 with one word on it, books. What Kylie did in that moment when I had no options is she confirmed that trust was the right choice. And she not only changed my life, she changed her life. And what I realized from this experience is that Chiaroscuro is about where you're at right now. 
It's about the way that you're living your life now. It doesn't matter what happened to you in the past. Right now, at that moment, there was hope and there was light and there was chiaroscuro. So fast forward to today. I'm 40 now. I've experienced a lot of success and been able to do things I never dreamed I would have been able to do when I was younger. And what I've learned is that through telling stories of companies and organizations and products for the past 20 years, the most important story is the story inside of us. Yes, darkness has been a part of my story. It's given my life depth and dimension. Yes, shadows have defined me. They've made me stronger and more compassionate. I look at my three-year-old daughter, and I want her to know. You control your story. You have the power to retell it, reshape it, reconstruct it, and change it. So here's what I'd like to leave you with. Forget Tolstoy and Isabella Allende and Francis Ford Coppola. The most important stories are your personal narratives. Darkness and light will always exist in our life, sometimes at the same time. This is something to be grateful for. Much of what is beautiful and important in the world arises from difficulty. Much of what is beautiful and important in my life has arisen from the shadows. And I am not alone. There are countless people who I know whose stories have been crafted in the dark. There are countless people who have used difficulty and pain to create a deeper understanding of what it means to be human. You don't have to share your story to affect change. You just have to own it. So look inside of yourselves, inside of that incredible story that's living in you, behind all of your faces today, and recognize the power and the beauty in your personal narrative. Use the darkness and the light and let it drive you forward. Thank you.